Okay, we're going to be making another ferro cell video here, but you're going to see some things that you've never seen before. Uh, whenever I test, I'm going to show you this before I put the magnets underneath there. I'm going to do one test where I have a pair of 5 8 inch neodymiums. I'm going to have them like this under the ferro cell. And what you're going to see is you're going to see a double dielectric inertial plane. The inertial plane, the dielectric inertial plane along each of these magnets is associated such wise. You have a polarity here, north, south, south, north. So we're going to have crossing points here. We're going to have a quote-unquote attraction, which is dielectric uh, avoidance. Have attraction here and here, here and here. But also, obviously, we're going to have a cross pattern. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Anyway, so, and then I'm also going to show you polarity like this. And what you're going to see is that you're going to see that this view, this is North Pole, this is South Pole. You're going to see that underneath the ferro cell, this image looks exactly like a single magnet this way, for obvious and logical reasons. Point nonspecific field incommensurability. So, north-south, south-north. So we're going to get cross-attraction, dielectric. So, now let's turn our light off and it's going to take a look at something else first. It's hard to see in the dark. Let's grab our one and a quarter inch by half inch disc magnet. And then let's we'll grope around in the dark for our pointer. Here we have a static magnet. Right? Right. Here we have a dielectric inertial plane. You can see how bright the light is here. Here we have each one of our poles. How do you think you get electrification? It seems the most Apparent ignorance we have today that nobody's able to differentiate dielectricity from electricity. Electricity is phi times psi magnetism times dielectricity equals Q electrification in Planck. What do you think copper coils and windings are coupling off of in the creation of electrification? of electricity. Electricity is the hybrid of magnetism and dielectricity. So let's use retroductive platonic methodology to come to a conclusion. Well, let's see. We have our four factors of electrical engineering, which is magnetism, dielectricity, space, and time. Well, well there, Bobby. We have plenty of magnetism and dielectricity in this particular object. This, uh, dielectric object that we call incorrectly a magnet since it is not driven by a magnet it is driven by dielectricity concentrated at here so now all we're missing is space and time well Bobby we got plenty of space and time all over the place so all we have to do is move the magnet in space and time remember magnetism reciprocates centrifugally divergently reintegrates convergently so all we have to do is move our magneto dielectric device in space and time what do you think our copper coils off copper coils are coupling off of we have electromotive force induction current voltage now let's move our magneto dielectric object in space and time each one of these little crossing points you see here let me catch one where you can see it very clearly. I'm actually able to see it better on a smaller magnet. Each one of these little crossing points where you can see a little X is a point of electrification. Now you think, well, you're just showing that to me in a ferro cell. That doesn't mean anything. There's 10 uh, nanometers of uh, micron thin ferro fluid separating two optical gray lenses. This doesn't prove to me that there's electrification. Look right here. Can you see that? where it creates a little wisping pattern as I move the magnet in space and time. That's right, kitties, that is electrification. It is empirically measurable. Empirically measurable. I'm not just showing it to you in a fair lens. Yes, you can get electricity off simply moving a magnet. Here we have a sphere magnet. It's a uh, half-inch neodymium iron boron. You're able to see it a little bit better here. Let me show you the perfect little point. Now look right here. Okay, you see as these two points cross and diverge right here, just look right here. Yes, that is electrification. I am moving a magneto dielectric object in space and time. What are our four factors of electrical engineering? 
Magnetism, dielectricity, space and time. That's right, kitties. There is electricity. Now, just sitting on a table, we're not getting any electrification out of a magnet. Obviously, a magnet has never zapped anybody, has it now? No, we have to move. See these crossing points right there? What is occurring right here? This is where magnetism meets dielectricity. You get a very small and empirically measurable electrical charge. That's right, kitties. A magnet moved in space and time, a single bloody magnet you can get electrification off of. That's correct. Space, time, dielectricity, and magnetism. Yes, the four components of electrical engineering. That's right. We certainly can get that. Oh, yeah. And yes, it is empirically measurable. Now let's grope around in the dark for a ring magnet. Here we have a one, I think it's a one, one and a one eighth inch ring magnet, unbroken. Okay. The only reason I actually have a very slight gap in uh, the field is because I have a missing LED because of the uh, circumferential diameter of the uh, lenses. The reason there's a gap here and why this isn't a perfect hypertrochoid pattern. My earlier video, I showed you that uh, I uh, discovered the mathematical formula divinely simplex for drawing out and the reason for this hypertrochoid pattern. Some call it a spirograph pattern. You see that I should take some camera views at a steep angle because you can actually see a deep holographic like effect. Even though the ferrofluid solution is extremely, insanely thin, you actually get a really wonderful holographic 3D like uh, view because of, uh, of the field lines and how uh, it's bent by the LED light. You see along our dielectric inertial plane. Now, let's take the same magnet that's been broken. Oddly enough, we'll always break at a ratio of, you can't see it in the darkness, break at a ratio of, uh, it's uh, 1 to uh, 1.23606 to phi. So it always breaks at a ratio of phi and uh, 1 plus uh, phi to the power of negative 3. Now look here, we have a broken ring magnet. This is the exact same magnet I just showed you a second ago, except it's broken right here. It's actually in one piece, but it's flipped because you can never reassemble it back the way it was. It wants to flip itself after it's broken in two, but it doesn't break exactly in two. Now watch as I rotate it. See all these points right here? You see this? That's electrification. That's correct. I'm taking dielectricity and magnetism moving in space and time. Yes, there is electricity in a single magnet. What's the difference? There's nothing coupling off of this electricity. It's just the magnet. I don't I have, a, have a dielectric reflector here. A coil, a winding. Obviously needs to be moving a lot, lot faster, but this is empirically measurable. Yes, there is electricity in a single moving magnet. Obviously, necessitatively so. Four principles of electrical engineering, dielectricity, magnetism, space, and time. This isn't my premise. This is the premise of James Clerk Maxwell, Faraday, and the rest. Now, watch as I move my ring magnet here. Do you see the 3D? Now, it's really wonderful if you look at a steep angle, which you're not looking at. You're only looking top down. You are seeing electrification going on. You see this swirling pattern here? I'm going to turn the light on in a second, and I'm going to let you take a look at, uh, at uh, what this uh, ring magnet is and where it's broken at. Remember, this is the exact same ring magnet I was showing you a second ago. Let's turn the light on so you can see what it is that I was pointing to. You see this ring magnet? This side was originally over here. Now, it looks reassembled, but it's not, because once you break a ring magnet like this, it will immediately, actually, it'll fold over like this. You'll have a double layer of crescent, but I reassembled it into a ring. It looks reassembled, but it's not. This side was originally inverse on the other side when it broke. So, let's take a look at the ring magnet again. So, now let's just actually take a look at one piece of a ring magnet. And then I will reassemble it again. But it's not reassembled as it was created, but reassembled as to how it will settle because of the breakage. Because remember from our prior video, magnets do not fold due to magnetism. Magnetism attracts nothing. 
Magnetism displaces things. Magnetism reaches out to ferrous objects, causes a dielectric coherency at which the ferrous object will jump, accelerate towards the quote unquote magnet, but it's jumping there due to dielectricity. But what is reaching out in space and time obviously is magnetism, but what it affects is the dielectricity in a ferrous object which causes it to become coherent and accelerate. Now look right here. Isn't this beautiful? Well, yes, it's beautiful, but what's going on here? Remember, this is our broken portion of our ring magnet. Each one of these little wisps is electrification. Dielectric is along top to bottom base. Magnetism is reciprocating around centrifugally, centripetally or along our ring magnet. Let's reassemble it in the dark. If I can, which I probably can't, I might be able to. There we go. Now, what you can't see, and I showed you on a previous video, is uh, actually I showed it to you in video 51. You have a crossing point. I'm going to show you the really interesting magnet here in a second. Those are two 5 8 inch magnets. So, you see our little pattern here? This is electrification, kitties. It is with a uh, very sensitive electrical detector you are able to get that off a single magnet yes that's right there is electricity in a magnet four components of electrical engineering magnetism dielectricity space and time obviously the magnet sitting here like this I'm getting nothing why no movement in space and time Space and time are posterior to fields. All you're doing is penetrating the ether plane, the ether membrane. Moving fields in space and time obviously creates electrification. This is how nature works. This is where charge comes from. We're always trying to pierce the ether membrane and get electrification. It's quite a lovely pattern, isn't it? The actual depth on it at a steep angle is uh, very beautiful. Well, pretty pictures aren't what we're interested in. We're interested in understanding comprehension, fundamental comprehension. Now, let's show you the save the best for last, as they say. Remember, we have our two 5 8 inch magnets north south, south north, north south, south north. We have mutual attraction, mutual attraction, which is actually dielectric voidance. It's not attraction. Magnetism attracts nothing. Each one of these little coupling points right here, you can see it really well here. You see that? That point right there, yes, that is electricity. Where dielectricity and magnetism come together in space and time in movement is electrification. The thing you need is a dielectric reflector. I coiled a couple off of that at high speed, but yes kitties, in a magnet we have our two conditions to meet the production of energy. Dielectricity and magnetism. The only thing that needs to be added is a space-time component. Movement in space over time. Space is a posterior attributes of fields. There's no such thing as a field in space. There is only space as posterior to fields. We are humans composed up of atoms, which are composed up of magnetodielectric fields. Inside fields, inside the Earth's magnetosphere, inside the heliosphere, inside the galactic field. Endless fields upon fields. No human being could ever, would ever be outside of a field. We have no conception of same nor will we ever. So, now let's just take a look at either end of the magnet. Now you think, now this is the identical profile to a single magnet laying on its side where you're looking at the dielectric inertial plane in either quote-unquote pole. But what we're looking at here actually is two separate magnets. You'll notice that the profile is absolutely identical. See these crossing points? That's right, right here. See that? Look at this. Yes, that's right. That's electrification. Dielectricity. These little crosshatch spirograph looking hypertrochoid patterns is the con convergent, excuse me, the divergent magnetism. When I move magnets in space and time, I get electrification. Yes. 
Apparently some people don't know that fact. So this profile of two magnets in quote-unquote attraction is exactly the same thing as the profile if I lay one magnet on its side. You notice this? This is one magnet on its side. Same profile as two magnets in quote-unquote attraction. This is the top of one magnet, this is the top of another magnet. Same profile as one magnet on its side. Now let's look at a quadrupolar look. We have our two magnets here. This one's here and this one's here. North, south, south, north. You see this little black spot right here in the center? It's like a little four petal daisy. Dielectricity flushes space. Yes, that's a bad analogy. This is fields. Dielectricity mediating out to terminate space. That's why ring magnets fold and they keep folding or a disc magnet or hard drive magnets, they do not fold and crack and break. They crack and break obviously because they're ceramic. But if you keep cracking and breaking them, they'll fold in the tightest little smallest spatial object possible. And that's not due to magnetism, it's due to dielectricity. Dielectricity is centripetal, counterspatial, inertial. Here's our quadrupolar look. It's kind of mesmerizing to look at it. The only unfortunate thing is that these magnetic objects, especially the larger ones, the magnetic radiation affects your eyes. And I've been stooped over magnets for so long recently that uh, it's actually affected my uh, eyeballs. Uh, the feeling goes away after uh, a few hours, but it's like a dull, awful pain. Doing research into that, we know that animals are actually some. We actually speculate that birds can actually see magnetic fields, and it's not necessarily the magnetic ferrites in their brain that steer them north or south, but they can actually see fields due to, uh, I think they call them magnetophores inside the, their eyeballs. And humans have this to a certain degree, as research has found. And I can assure you, I'm probably the number one person that's been stooping over magnetic radiation in the past. Uh, few months and I can actually feel it in my eyes. Anyway, well, here we have our four poles. Here we have two poles of two different magnets. So, now let's grab our large one and a quarter inch disc by a half inch thick. This is our disc magnet. You can't actually see the electrification very well on this because it's so powerful. You notice how the lines are really bright here and they're faded out here? That's right. Light has a radial z-axis dielectric component. You see how the, mat, how the light, if I bring it in the perfect position here in the camera, it's easier to see at an angle actually. It's hard to see up here on just the camera view. You notice how the light is bright here and it fades as it comes into the inertial plane? That's right. The dielectricity is attracting the dielectric component of light. Light is attracted at the dielectric inertial plane and diverged away from magnetic field called the Faraday effect. There's a few patents regarding the bending of light with magnetism, but you can only bend light away from magnetism, but light, since it has a z-axis radial dielectric component, steers light towards. This is why light is bent around a stellar object. It has nothing to do with the warpage of space. Space does nothing, is nothing, and affects nothing. The reason why light bends around large massive objects is because mass, gravity, is dielectric by nature. Matter is a stable form of dielectricity. Centripetal fields, the same way dielectricity is centripetal inertial. Dielectricity affects dielectricity and attraction. That's why light, just like this light, just imagine this is starlight bending around a supermassive object. You can see it bending towards the inertial plane. That is why light from distant galaxies bends around a large stellar object. Yes, you can see that in a ferrocell lens. Here's an interesting attribute of a sphere. A sphere magnet. is because it is spherical, there is a, a good deal of... Uh, Divergence between the centrifugal, like a good ring magnet, a large ring magnet. 
You can either use a large ring magnet or you can use a sphere magnet that's really powerful. But you see this black ring right around here and the bright ring here? You notice as I turn it? The brighter rings are the centripetal convergent and the, the lower rings are the centrifugal divergent. But the reason that there's a black gap here is because I'm using a sphere magnet, you're able to see this black ring right here between the centripetal convergent and the centrifugal divergent. This black ring is a separator between the convergent and the divergent uh, magnetism. You're also able to see it. You're really able to see it if you get it at a steep angle and have to start making some videos at a steeper angle. You also notice the difference in the color of the light. Do you notice how the centrifugal over here is a, uh, you might not be able to see it, is a, uh, is a greenish yellowish hue and uh, the reason that and this is all white light LED there's there are no RGB components in this one I switched out my I should have mentioned that earlier and I switched out my uh, switched out my LED strips which were RGB LEDs this is white light only LEDs here we look along our dielectric inertial plane oh look I'm moving dielectricity and magnetism in space and time Right here, you are seeing electricity. Right there. See it? Right there. See there? This? Boom, 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 boom. Yes, folks. There is electricity in a single magnet, but it has to be moved in space and time. Just sitting there, obviously, getting nothing. Let's take a look at our, our ring magnet again really quick. A broken ring magnet, preferably, if I can ever find it, which I probably can't in the dark. Anyway, I was glad to bring this video to you. I need to start making some steeper angle views so you can see what's going on here. You're able to see the the, the depth of field that you're able to see of uh, both of electrification and of uh, the dielectricity. Under the ferro cells you saw in, uh, I mean the field viewing film, not the ferro cell, the field viewing film in video 51, you're able to see that uh, we have uh, dielectricity not only running along the uh, the equator of the uh, the ring magnet but also now that it's broken we have a dielectrical line right here and when I'm moving it here what I'm doing is I'm actually torquing dielectricity between the two broken pieces because remember when we broke the uh, ring magnet it flipped itself over you can't make it a ring without it flipping over I mean you can make two crescent pieces on top of each other but the only way to make it a ring again is for it to want the broken piece to be flipped opposite to how it was when it was created before it was broken so here you can see dielectricity mediating itself and if you look at a steep angle you're able to get amazing depth of uh, depth of view and remember just how incredibly thin this layer of uh, ferrofluid is Anyway, thanks for watching.